Hey everybody, and welcome to Let's Look at Delver's Drop. This is a little bit of a weird Let's Look at for me, uh, and I know I've been saying that a lot lately, but this one definitely falls into the uh, kind of category of Let's Look at's I don't do all that often, because this is a game that is still not only very much in development, but actually has an active Kickstarter campaign, which is actually part of the impetus uh, for me to be doing this video right now. It's gotten a lot of press uh, from game games industry folks on Twitter, but still sits about $25,000 shy of its goal with uh, about 10 days to go as of the time of this recording anyway. So I thought I would do my part, play a little Delver's Drop and explain why I think uh, people who are into games like, you know, Spelunky, The Binding of Isaac, basically any roguelike dungeon crawler, reminds me a little bit of Legend of Dungeon as well, uh, only in like a top-down form, uh, might be interested in checking out this game. So Delver's Drop is from Pixelscopic Games and what this is essentially is a um, roguelike dungeon crawler that is top-down or isometric, I guess. Uh, so similar kind of in design, or function, I guess you could say, uh, to The Binding of Isaac, but it, it's a little bit different with respect to its combat, of course, which is melee-focused, and of course with respect to its visual style, which I feel is one of the strengths of the game right now. Uh, what I do have to say is, in the interest of full disclosure, this is very much still in development right now. As far as I know, this is a pre-alpha build, uh, and this is just showcasing a very, very minor kind of subset of the features that are going to be available in the final version of the game. Right now we are playing the Endless Drop mode, uh, which is basically just a survival mode where you try to get as far as you can go. Every floor you go down, uh, you're going to have to deal with a single room, and uh, sometimes that room will involve combat, sometimes that room will involve puzzles. Uh, as far as I know, the rooms are randomly generated, but I can't actually vouch for that 100% right now. But yeah, some of the rooms are, are more combat focused, some of them are more puzzle focused, whether that's like a platforming puzzle or, um, you know, a switch puzzle, and some of them are, you know, a mixture of both, shall we say. This one is actually a mixture of both here. So this is not the actual main mode, but as far as I know, the guys at Pix Pixelscopic have told me that the main mode is uh, kind of nowhere near being ready to, shown right, to be shown right now, but uh, this is basically functions somewhere between a proof of concept and a tech demo, and, you know, in that respect, I think it works pretty well. So let's talk about the basic mechanics of what is going on in Delver's Drop here. Those of you who have watched you know, my videos on other games with roguelike elements are probably pretty familiar with what the heck's going on here. But basically, we're playing as this character right here. Uh, the number in the top left indicates the number of rooms that we've completed, I believe. The number in the top right is our gold. Let's head down to the next floor. Uh, the other HUD elements at... The oh, this could be tough. Uh, the other HUD elements at the uh, very top middle... Oh, I'm gonna get hit there. Uh, we have a shield marker and a health marker, which should pretty much speak for itself. As you get hit, uh, the shield markers will go down, and when you have no shield markers left, then your health will start to go down. But we can replenish our health with various pork-based food products that we find in these barrels. For example, you know, bacon, uh, big ham hocks, etc, etc. Uh, but they seem pretty rare. This game is very difficult so far. I've, the furthest I've ever made it is floor 11, so hopefully we'll be able to better that. But I've only played for about a half hour so far. Uh, we also have items down there in the bottom right, and we'll be able to uh, get a suite of items that will help us in our quest here. So I've, I've come across bombs, I've come across like a magical staff. Oh my god, these ghosts are the worst fucking enemies in the entire game. Basically, these guys are going to float around like crazy. My hope is that I don't have to kill them all to open the, uh, the door at the end. Some rooms, uh, in order to open that like path down to the next floor, you have to kill all the enemies. Some of them you just have to hit a switch, but it looks like this is one of the ones where I'm gonna have to kill all of the enemies. So let's um, try to do this. Basically, I'm gonna... Oh, I thought I was gonna throw a bomb at this one. We have six bombs, so that allows us to do a fairly decent amount of damage. Uh, but the other way to take these guys out is to get really close to them as soon as they appear. Try not to get hit by the fire, and then you have a brief window where you can do damage to them. But, you know, they are annoying as hell simply because of that mechanic. And we might actually die here, we're losing a lot of health. Enemies, even very early on in the game, are uh, pretty scary. They have the potential to kill you pretty easily. I've been killed by rats, I've been killed by bats, I've been killed by falling down holes. This game is, uh, you know, compared to The Binding of Isaac, which might not be a totally fair comp- Oh, I walked into the spike and died! Like I said, fairly draconian. Anyway, when you finish the, uh, the levels here, you can see how much coinage you collected, that's your gold. Room survived, enemies dispatched, how much health you lost, and how many shield shards you lost. And then you restart back at the start here. Uh, so yeah, I hope I don't run into those ghosts too much. Uh, they have been by far the most annoying enemies I've dealt with in the early part of this game. I hope we come across more puzzle rooms as well. Uh, but let's, before we talk about the distribution for this game so far, how you can get your hands on it or support it, uh, let's play another round here. Just want to emphasize, before we get started here, that one of the things I feel is strongest about this game right now is the dynamic lighting. This is something I talked about kind of ad nauseum in that Legend of Dungeon video as well, uh, which was kind of like a side-scrolling version of the dynamic lighting. 
uh, that we have going on here. Uh, but I, I really like how the lighting and the shadow effects kind of play off of one another. It really makes the game look uh, dynamic and, and fairly interesting. You know, I, I of course love the Binding of Isaac's art style as well. Uh, I have come across this room before, so I'm, I'm willing to say, you know, that maybe there are some repeats in the room design, at least in its current state. Uh, I think what I want to do here is blow up this crate, and this will start that bomb, or that box, moving like back and forth. Which may in some way trigger this switch, if that makes any sense at all. I think then we need to send this one off. That might be what's going on here. Thank god that bomb didn't just fall into the empty space. I think I might have- oh, you know what? I probably had to hit this one over here. I might have actually screwed myself so bad that I can't complete this room. Because the only way to get down here at this point, I have to hit that switch, but I'm not sure how to do that, because if I fall, you know, it's not like Link to the Past where you just take one damage. If I fall, I die, so let's just start over again. I might have misused my bombs completely there. Again, very punishing. One of the complaints I have about this game, I, I do have some, some feedback, uh, that hopefully the developers will, you know, it's, I'm, it's only one man's opinion, but uh, in my opinion, it's a couple things need to be worked on. Right now, the soundtrack is like not where it needs to be. Obviously, it's a work in progress, but it's just like the same eight bars that repeat over and over and over, which can get a little bit grating, uh, despite the fact that they do, you know, do serve some purpose in building the atmosphere, I guess you could say. Uh, but as is right now, I'm gonna take back what I said about procedural generation, at least in the game's current state. It, it appears that these rooms are basically based on templates, which is cool enough in its own right, but I can definitely see that becoming uh, a little bit repetitive as you get further and further along. As far as I know, that gold is inaccessible right now. What I am gonna do is use my bomb just to kill- oh, that might not work. I wanted to throw the bomb over the edge and kill all of those weird little um, mangoes there. That is not what a mango looks like. I'm aware of that. Cut me some slack here. Um, I totally forgot what I was saying a second ago. This is more one of the more uh, puzzle-focused rooms as opposed to uh, the combat-focused rooms. Those uh, bombs that these things shoot out are the magic or the shots from the turrets, however you want to describe it, uh, do a substantial amount of damage to you. Might be enough to kill me. I'm not 100% sure, but they may indeed be enough to kill me. Uh, there's some cool physics elements involved in the game as well. Like, we'll come across levels. We've already seen the, uh, kind of crates that kind of slide back and forth as if there's very little friction. Oh, that was the other thing I wanted to say is that the, the friction on your dude seems a little bit weird to me. Sometimes it kind of feels like you're controlling a shopping cart. Uh, but, you know, again, that's partly just because I'm so used to Isaac, uh, where you can turn on a dime. Whereas in this one, you can kind of do a little bit more of a skitter, if you will. Uh, these guys also, you know, are affected by physics. They tend to kind of float around, I guess, due to them basically, you know, sensically being frictionless due to that whole lubricated gel setup that they've got going on. And again, I love that every room, not only the, the dynamic lighting effects look really good, but even just like the room itself and the way uh, your perspective kind of scrolls along, I, I say that knowing that it's vague, but mostly because of my own laymanism when it comes to design, but also even just the, the art on the, uh, the character itself looks really good. So I think visual style is definitely one of this game's strongest suits. The, the easiest way to describe this game, at least in its current state, is that it's it's a little bit like uh, like a top-down Legend of Dungeon. Whereas in Legend of Dungeon, the, the other major difference is that in uh, Legend of Dungeon, you spend a lot of your time uh, trying to figure out where to go, or at least I spend a lot of my time figuring out where to go, in the game's current state at least, because you know these are both works in progress. Uh, whereas in this game, I kind of prefer this style, where you're just directly going down to the next floor. This happens occasionally, by the way, with the physics. We're just gonna try to knock these dudes out of here, because that sound can get real annoying real fast. Uh, but these coils do uh, have physical effects on the world. That chest, by the way, in the uh, top right of the map, should open up as soon as we kill all the enemies in this room. I'm hoping, my goal for this video, if we can survive past floor 10, I will consider this video to be a success. Uh, the time I got to floor 11 was basically just pure luck. There's a, a seeming amount of randomness involved in the game, uh, in terms of your success, like whether you're going to... Oh, the, I guess I just had to hit that switch actually to open that crate. Uh, but a certain amount of randomness is inherent to your success. Like, for example, the run where I did really well was mostly due to the fact that I came across like three rooms in a row that had no enemies. And on the other hand, simply contained, you know, large chests. Which uh, also provided me with extra items and whatnot. I'm hoping as well we'll get items other than bombs because uh, those can be not only helpful but indicative of how the game can change based on the kind of roguelike elements. Again, keep in mind uh, when you're looking at this game that this is not a finished product by any stretch of the imagination right now. This is a press- oh, can I be hit here? No, thank god. Uh, this is, as far as I know, a press-only build because the game is so uh, deep in development right now, or what's new in development? 
very much in development. What I'm trying to get at. Oh, no. I tried to rush it. Uh, that was only four rooms. Let's try this again. Uh, the, another thing I will say is that, you know, like Legend of Dungeon. If you haven't seen that video, a lot of these references are not going to make sense to you, I guess. Uh, but like Legend of Dungeon, we do have this kind of, like, opening area where you can amass some items. I kind of wish this wasn't here because I feel like it kind of... First off, I realize I don't have an obligation to always get everything here, but uh, I kind of feel that obligation because it's there. I've never been able to use gold for anything. I don't know if shops are not in the build yet. Uh, again, this is kind of like a, a very much a, a framework build of the game as is. A proof of concept that the game does exist. And I love when Kickstarter games or games that are being Kickstarter or have Kickstarter campaigns actually have something that is playable. Uh, this is not playable by everybody, I guess, at least in its current state. But, um, you know, the game does exist. It's not just something that exists in a dude's head. Uh, it just needs to be fleshed out a little bit. I totally forgot what I was saying earlier. Okay, this is a hard one. These, uh, remember if we fall down the hole, we die. I don't actually know if there's any holes on this level. Uh, but those spikes will do a lot of damage to us as well. And we don't really see a lot. The way the game plays with lighting makes things very tricky. Uh, but in a positive way. And remember, you know, when we get hit by enemies, sometimes we will be blown backwards. Blown backwards. Flexible fellatio, the Northern Lion story. I don't know, man. It's been a while since I did a Northern Lion story joke. I feel like my, my template... Oh! is uh, a little bit askew, shall we say. Um, but yeah, we, we can be affected by physics as well, so we have to watch out for, you know, enemies that will hit us into these spikes. Now we have a room with ghosts, which is going to be annoying as hell. A, a, a few ghosts, not so bad. Many ghosts is where we have the problem. And space ghosts, of course. Um, what I'm hoping is actually, you know, we saw some of those turrets down there at the bottom. I'm hoping those turrets will actually uh, hit some of the ghosts. I don't know if they can, though. I'm assuming they can. Otherwise, these guys are a real P in the D. But, the thing is, I can also throw bombs at them. Assuming they don't shoot at me. I wonder if I can get that guy. Okay, shoot at me? Nope. You kind of want to go to them into shooting first, and then you can get in there and usually do one damage to them like this. No. I kind of feel like the ghost mechanic either needs some work, or I need to learn how it works. Because I'm doing pretty badly at it so far. Are you serious? Neither of those guys? Okay, we're going to throw a bomb in here. And hopefully this will do a lot of damage to those two. Well, at least hurt one. Bounce the other guy over a little bit. Uh, I don't like wasting my bombs like that. But my patience is wearing thin for these ghosts. Uh, let's... Just roll around here. Oh my god, are you kidding me? There... Did we not... I think my problem is my sword keeps hitting the turret. Or the, the torch. So I can't seem to make this work. Remember, this could just be my bad. It took me like 10 episodes of The Binding of Isaac to realize that um, you're not supposed to attack the turrets right away. There we go. That guy was attackable, but I totally fucked it up. Ghosts, I hate you. There we go. Okay, so we're, we've are we killed one. Is there only one? There's two remaining. That one's not going to do it. I wonder if we could just toss another bomb in here and get lucky. That's a good bomb placement. And that did indeed destroy him, but we have one more left before we can finish off this room. It's almost, it's like fighting hoppers in uh, in The Binding of Isaac. Well, we can waste our last bomb, which is obviously a bad idea. But in the interest of speeding things up a little bit here. Now, just don't get killed by these fucking laser bullets. What I like about this game in, in relation to The Binding of Isaac, it's kind of like the danger element of Spelunky in The Binding of Isaac's form. So... Like, one mistake can kill you due to an interaction of physics and dangerous elements, uh, which I think is really cool. Whereas in The Binding of Isaac, you know, usually you're just whittled down more slowly, which is, of course, awesome in its own right. Uh, but I like that this game is a little bit more punishing, shall we say. It's got a little bit more of that classic roguelike difficulty. Uh, I mean, I'm not really qualified to talk about The Binding of Isaac's difficulty anymore, considering I've played it for like 300 hours, but... I hopefully you get what I'm saying there. I really think this is a good game. Even in its current state, it's fun enough to play. I played for like 45 minutes uh, and was not getting bored with things at all, even though I'm seeming, seeing some of the same rooms over and over again. So after I die, I'll talk about the uh, kind of current state of this game uh, and how... Oh, God. Oh, that was really silly. Well, that was good timing, though. Uh, I'll talk about the, the current state of the game and how you can help out uh, in Pixelscopic's development here. So let's start in our kind of neutral room right here at the top. So, as I mentioned, uh, right now Delver's Drop has about 10 days left in its Kickstarter campaign. I will put a link to that Kickstarter campaign 
down there in the uh, video description that you can click on if you so choose. Uh, basically, it needs about $25,000 out of $75,000, so it's about 33% of the way from its goal with about 33% of the campaign remaining. So it's right on the the edge, basically, of looking like a likely uh, funded project. I would really like to see this funded. Uh, the tiers, basically $5 gets you backer credit on the game's website. $15 gets you pre-order access to the game, as well as some things like the soundtrack and uh, the uh, book of concept art. Well, I, I'm pretty sure it's a digital file of concept art, but you'll have to check the website to guarantee that 100%. Uh, it's a DRM-free copy, by the way. I'm not sure if this is, uh, gonna come out on Steam. I guess nobody is because of the, the whole green light mechanic these days. Uh, and for $25, you get access to the early beta of the game, which I don't know if it has a tentative start date yet, but note that the $15 pre-order tier, as far as I know, does not come with access to the early beta, which, uh, might be a deal-breaker for some, but at the $25 tier, you do get early access to that. So, I know that my audience is super into roguelikes, as am I, so if you're interested in contributing to that campaign, now is basically the time to do so uh, in order to ensure that this game actually comes to fruition, basically. And there's such a good framework here, I think it would be a real shame if it didn't. Normally, I kind of stand back and let people make their own decisions when it comes to Kickstarters, and I mean, that is what is happening here because, you know, I'm not in control of your wallet, but consider this a, a strong call to action from me. Uh, to, to support this. I'm gonna- I've never backed a Kickstarter project before in my entire life, as much as I'm ashamed to admit it, but I am gonna set up an account, uh, to back Delver's Drop. And you guys can hold me to that, as well, so that I don't just turn into a marketing shill or something. Uh, but in any case, yeah, that's the- the basic setup, uh, for probably, you know, 90% of you who are watching this. There are higher tiers as well if you're interested in that, but, uh, you'll have to look on the website to kind of get a feel for what that stuff is all about. But in any case, uh, you know, I, I, I have a reasonable amount of confidence that this game is going to get to... Ooh, that was very close. That this game is going to get to, uh, where it needs to be in order to be funded. I just wanted to kind of do my part, uh, to make sure that was perhaps more of a possibility. Please tell me that bomb is good. That seems pretty good. Oh, it, it, the problem with this, this room actually killed me in the run I did immediately, uh, before I started filming. So I'm a little bit wary about things as they are right now, but sadly the bomb only uh, knocked them down to like the first state. It didn't actually, we're just gonna run through here. It didn't actually kill them, which I expected to happen. Those are like two hitters, almost like a, a blast assist or something, if you will. And you know, this is the kind of game, I, I'm really interested to see how the uh, kind of real mode, or the I'm gonna call it campaign mode for lack of a better uh, word right now. I'm really interested to see how that mode works out, because it's worth noting, as I've mentioned a couple of times, this is, uh, basically just one of the, like, bonus modes that is included in the game, which is, I guess, the easiest way to kind of demonstrate the, the proof of what they have going on so far, because that campaign mode is not very much, or not fleshed out very much at this present point. Uh, so yeah, I'm interested to see how that's gonna look as well, and hopefully, uh, Pixoscopic will give me a chance to take a look at that as we get a little bit deeper into the game's development. I don't know if the game's gonna exist if it doesn't get funded on Kickstarter. I think it will, though they'll probably try to find some other way uh, to get this out there. Uh, but I hope it manages to make that. I think part of the, the thing with Kickstarter is people look at a game like this and, you know, it, it relatively... At, at least to a layperson, it looks relatively simplistic graphically, and then they're like, $75,000? Why do they need $75,000 to make a game like this? Well, then you have uh, Indiegogo campaigns like that Skullgirl uh, adding an extra character to Skullgirls that costs $150,000 and they're super transparent about the, uh, the cost of that. And I think now people are starting to realize, like, whoa, video games cost way more to develop than we originally anticipated. I mean, they have other stuff to deal with over at that, uh, Skullgirls campaign, obviously, like Xbox Live, uh, arcade certification costs and stuff like that. And PSN, I guess, probably has something along the same lines. But, uh, anyway, that was just kind of a, a tangent to explain that, you know, $150,000, $75,000 for Delver's Drop. Yes, it's a lot of money, especially, you know, it seems like a lot of money to one person, but to put out a product that people are actually going to enjoy and, you know, market it effectively and ensure that it's not super buggy when it comes out, you no, know, it, it, it takes time, and time is always money. It takes also, you know, just money directly over that as well. So I think this is the last run. Oh, I hate this room. I thought this room was only actually after uh, the 10th floor, but I guess that's not the case. This is the hardest puzzle-ish room that I've dealt with so far. Uh, basically, if I even, like, stand... If I keep pushing this block when the, uh, turret fires, I will still take damage. Just from, like, random, I guess, area of effect damage. But anyway, I managed to get through that okay. Again, reiterating, my only goal for this video is to get down to the 10th floor or beyond. We're halfway there now, and I've got a good shield 
uh, and, and good health as well. Please tell me there's just a switch on this level. I like the way it zooms in when you're on a, a smaller level as well. Not every single level is the same size. It allows you to switch it up uh, visually a little bit, which I, I think is a refreshing change of pace. Ah, oh, come on. There is, you know, there's, there's certain issues with the game being in the state that it's in. Like, enemies sometimes can be difficult to hit if they're standing near or on top of uh, objects, which is really annoying sometimes, especially when you're dealing with these ghosts. You saw, like, a weird kind of physics glitch there, too, um, where... Uh, that guy was like moving sideways after I hit him and then uh oh yep, there we go I uh, was moving sideways after I hit him but then he continued moving sideways after he like phased back into the game anyway that is floor six done and as far as I know we didn't take any damage there so it's down to the next floor where hopefully that will continue for us uh, let's do this not get hit the bats have also ended many of my runs but provided you can get them uh, into a position where they're kind of stun locked and it's okay. Ghosts, super annoying, as I've mentioned many times, especially ghosts on levels where there's a lot of these spike things available. The wooden spike things you can break, uh, but the, the metallic ones, I don't think you can. So let's just chill out over here. I'm sure the ghost is gonna spawn back in at some point. There we go. Ah, almost got him. Now he's up here. I'll take that damage gladly, but I, I really expected to be able to hit him as well. There we go. So we're down to floor 8. I think floor 10 is going to be a possibility here. Uh, again, I'm just collecting this gold kind of out of, you know, mock OCD. Oh god, we already have some kind of physics glitch going on here. One thing I will say, and this might totally ruin the balance of the game, but I would... I feel like I almost want the right analog stick. I'm using the 360 controller here. I almost want the right analog stick to be like a uh, pan function so I could like see what's going on over the entire level. Uh, it, I'm, I'm assuming it controls fine by the PC as well. Uh, but I can't actually vouch for that because I haven't uh, played it with keyboard and mouse myself. But you know, there's no like aiming function, like I'm not using right stick to aim or anything like that. I'm imagining it's just WASD to move around and maybe like left mouse to actually uh, attack as opposed to the A button to attack on the... Uh, 360 controller. Where's the switch, anyway? Oh, careful. Is the switch down here? Do I have to kill something? Oh, the switch is over there. Okay, I see. But how am I going to get to it is the real question. Uh, I wonder if I could just toss a bomb over there? Oh, you know what I can do? I can uh, attack this wooden kind of metallic thing. Uh, and then just sneak out this way. So, oh, I walked into the spike, but we're on floor 10. If I just beat this room again, consider it a glorious success, in my opinion, at least. So we're just going to hang out in these safe zones, basically. And then we get a chance. Move onwards. Oh, there's a switch over there. One hit will absolutely kill me in this situation, so I've got to be quite careful. I think, uh, yes, I'm safe here. I am safe here. Hit the switch, run away, and we'll just continue on. I think I'm going to be safe to get down to floor 11, which would match my previous best. There we go. This is always tricky. Again, if I fell down there, I would have died. And because your character controls as if there's not really all that much friction, uh, sometimes, I guess we can just use the physics to, to hurt these guys as well. Whenever we get into a good position to do so anyway. Which is not going to happen all that often. Uh, but when it does, certainly a welcome... Oh, that was the worst timing for those ghosts to be there. Uh, we can at least hurt that one. I guess it doesn't hurt him if he... No, oh, can we try this maybe? Uh, I totally botched it. And then I, again, fucked up the physics again. I'm pretty confident I'm gonna die here. Uh, health is pretty hard to come by, seemingly at least, in my experience so far. Managed to get down there and kill that one. How about this one? Can I just get lucky? I think it hit him. Wait, after they attack, they have a brief moment. I guess I don't even need to kill him. I can just run away. All right, see you later. Floor 12. A new record for me. Uh, and one single hit will kill me here. I immediately regretted running there, but managed to make it work for me. And we've got almost like an anodyne type puzzle here. Or I guess more accurately, uh, kind of like a link to the past type puzzle where I can just block all of these shots and hit that switch with the block. Most of the switches you don't actually have to like leave something on. You can just hit them once and then be on with it. And again, every floor is a, a gift here. I think this 
floor doesn't even actually have enemies or this yeah this room floor I always get my roguelike mechanics mixed up my nomenclature if you will uh, but we hit this switch it opens that delicious bounty down there for us of paper towels uh, there's a shield in there so I absolutely want to get that I'm kind of disappointed that we didn't get any other items the other items do seem rarer than bombs oh we did we got a crossbow actually what fortuitous timing. The crossbow basically functions as a ranged version uh, of a, our melee attack that does probably similar amounts of damage to our melee attack. Uh, these rats will just fall off the edge if I am lucky, which means uh, we won't have to deal with them. And instead, we'll just cut this down, move in here, and press this switch, which again will open up the next floor. Maybe we can get to floor 20. That would be pretty exciting for me. Uh, so oh! oh! Okay, I thought I fell down the actual... <laughs> Uh, I missed a shield over there, which is really disappointing. But this is what I mean! Sometimes you'll just get very lucky, uh, and you'll come across rooms like this, which will actually give you, you know, bounties of treasure. Or health, or shields, which are also, you know, very valuable as well. Uh, and it'll allow you to survive a little bit longer. Again, this is an endless mode. Uh, some endless modes actually do have an ending. I don't know if this is the case, if this ends at, like, level 99 or something, or if you can get even further. But we're just gonna keep on trucking until we actually find ourselves in a position where we are going to die, which... You know, hopefully it doesn't happen for a little while, uh, but might indeed happen on this room. Those bats are super annoying. I don't know if they can be hit by spikes. Like, I, I've been using the crossbow occasionally. It seems to go over smaller enemies like rats, uh, so I don't know if it would go under enemies like bats as well, which is, we might as well try it, I guess. That was a big miss. That was a, a terrible shot, which was also a big miss. There, okay, so the crossbow totally works uh, to take out these bats, but it does less damage than a melee attack, it seems like. Now, is the other treasure chest open here? It is indeed. Oh! That was real silly. Tried to walk over those spikes. We'll get more of those. Uh, more shields. And it's looking like floor 20 might actually be a possibility here. Now, what I was curious about when I played this for the first time is... Um, yeah, see, the, it just goes over the, uh, the rats there. The rats, by the way, explode when they die. So, I don't want to be near them when this happens. Uh, but I can use some bombs to take them out. I can try to get them to come back into that general area, I guess. I don't know. It's okay, the bombs are going off, and we're gonna be safe, I think. This room worries me. I, I, what I wanna see out of this mode, and I think this is gonna be in the campaign mode, uh, at least I hope it is, is, is some kind of like boss mechanic, uh, where you know, like every 10th floor you have a boss or something. That's one thing that I think um, 99 Levels to Hell did really well. Having a boss every 10th floor, 12th floor, 20th floor, whatever, uh, adds kind of an element of, of seeming progress. And actually, I'm starting to think that if we just continue to be as amazing at this game as we are, I will probably end the video pretty shortly because I've shown off most of what there is to show off in this current pre-alpha, as far as I know anyway, press build uh, of 99 levels to hell. Sorry, Delver's drop. That's what I get for talking about another roguelike dungeon crawler in the middle of this one. Now that bomb actually hit that switch, which I did not expect. I'm not sure if you have to use a, a physics-based puzzle to solve that one, but that's how that shit went down. So we'll stop this one on floor 20, smoke weed every day, uh, if I don't die before then. Actually, you know what? Why don't we stop it on this uh, room right here with the ghost? So again, I'd like to reiterate, this is Delver's Drop, currently with 10 days left in its Kickstarter. Uh, this is, as far as I know, some of the first footage of the game that has ever shown up on YouTube. Uh, they're gonna have their own video coming out soon as well, so you'll be able to check that out. But in the meantime, I will put a link in the video description to the Kickstarter page for this game. If you're interested in, in supporting it, uh, I would strongly encourage you to do so. Now is the time, basically, if, if you're uh, interested in seeing this game get made, uh, to, to contribute. Again, $5 for backer credit, $10 or $15 for access to the game. Uh, as if it was a pre-order and $25 for access to the early beta, which has not started yet And I'm not sure what the time frame on that is gonna be but in any case this is uh, Delver's drop from Pixelscopic Games and now that I've got this health I feel like I can go I can go on much longer, but alas I digress in any case. Thank you guys for watching and as always I will see you next time